Welcome to Tasmania. 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 Hello from Tasmania. More specifically, this morning I'm in Launceston um, in the kind of northern part of Tasmania. Um, and I'm here at the Hotel Grand Chancellor because this is where we're meeting for a wine tour. So I'm doing a tour today with the Tamar Valley Wine Tour Company and really excited. Booked it through Get Your Guide, so follow the link down below if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to book something similar for yourself. So we're going to be sampling some cold weather, cold climate wines. I think today but um, I'm sure I'll have loads more information I'm doing it with my sister we're on a bit of a road trip around Tasmania so um, I look forward to sharing everything so um, let's go taste some wines and I apologize if I get a little bit slurry towards the end of the, the video so here we are first stop is Velo Wines it's only about 15 minutes outside Launceston um, it's about 12 people on our tour, so our tour is full. And now we're about to go and taste our first wines. We tasted about um, eight different wines, mainly white. So I think what we'll find during the day is mostly um, everyone's producing the white wines. Um, really like the rosé, bought a bottle of that. They had some rosé sparkling. And then the, the main red was Pinot Noir. Most of the Tasmanian wine is drunk here in Tasmania. They produce 1% of all of Australia's wine production. Um, so it means that very little gets shipped to the mainland, um, even less, there's probably only maybe three producers that ship to the mainland, um, and even less that are going to make it out to Europe or anywhere like that. I'm interrupting this video to ask you a question. Have you been wine tasting in the Tamar Valley in Tasmania? Have you been wine tasting? Have you been to Tasmania? If you haven't and you want these to be on your bucket list, then don't forget to click the link below and check out my 201 bucket list ideas. So if you're looking for inspiration, then click on the link and sign up to get my free 201 inspirational travel bucket list ideas. You'll also get my newsletter every week which gives you travel inspiration, ideas, offers, deals and the latest news as well as my latest antics and adventures. So I look forward to you joining on my journey. Don't forget to sign up down below and um, anyway now let's get back to the wine tasting. So, what a fantastic day, wine tasting in the Tamar Valley. I could not recommend it highly enough. Tamar Valley Wine Tours. Um, go on the link below, um, and uh, when you're in Tasmania, it's something that has to be done. Good morning from Tasmania. More specifically, Deloraine near Launceston. Today I'm on the Tasting Trail, which is small artisan producers. Um, there's about 40 of them in this whole area. Um, I've picked about nine spots, and our first stop um, for breakfast is 41 degrees south, which is a salmon and ginseng farm. So this is our platter. Very exciting. We have hot smoked salmon. So that's already cooked, should just flake away. The salmon roulette there, a hot sauce, a ginseng spice and some beautiful, and some beautiful sourdough. Really looking forward to it. Absolutely amazing. Thoroughly recommend coming here. It's really, really tasty. So this is what you want to be looking out for. 
This is all the producers on the tasting trail. So like I said, there's like 42 of them. The truffles are actually fungus that grow on the roots of the oak trees. Um, and so they farm the oak trees and they have um, a team of dogs that come along and sniff um, and can find the truffles, which they then dig up. Um, but you can try all sorts. There's all sorts of um, salts that we've tried, delicious honey, oils. Um, there's even some pasta sauces, mustard. Um, yeah, so it's really, really cool. Guess what we're tasting next? So Melita Honey Farm, everything honey. Everything you could possibly imagine that you can buy with honey, flavoring, smell, everything. So if you're a honey fan, don't miss this stop. But what more do you need? We just bought some raspberries. Oh, and they're really cool. So, everything you could possibly want made from raspberries, which is raspberries. And after raspberries, just across the road, comes ice cream. So caramelized fig. You can try them. They've got so many flavors in there. You can try any of them. My sister's over there on the phone with the strawberries and cream. We're both very, very happy. That's delicious. And for all chocoholics, don't miss a stop at the House of Amber's chocolate shop. Final stop. Cheese. So that was our last stop on the tasting trail, Ash Grove Dairy Cheese Factory. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Have you enjoyed the day out? Oh, it's been an amazing day. An amazing day we've sampled so many things delicious fresh food from gate to plate we have so we now have um salmon roulette yes we have uh, we've eaten raspberries we've finished off some ice cream we have a bag of cheese bag of cheese for the next crackers. few days and crackers some trail mix for our hike tomorrow truffly things we bought some chocolates oh we've got some truffle um stuff so we're we're pretty stocked up some with basic, jam, some honey some soap yes honey and soap and yes so um yeah we're we're single-handedly keeping local businesses up and running today but if you'd like to do something similar um, if you would love to travel but you don't know where to start if you find you're on your own and you just don't know what to do in terms of solo travel then sign up to my newsletter um, but most importantly I offer um, transformational travel coaching if you want some one-to-one -one help or sign up for my find your way course which is everything that you need to know before you take on your first solo travel adventure so join me and I will help you to find your next journey. Here I am at Cradle Mountain National Park in Tasmania. Um, we've driven two hours from Launceston. <laughs> um, our plan is to do the Dove Lake Circuit, which is a two to three hour walk all the way around this lake. And back there is gorgeous Cradle Mountain. been told to keep an eye out for wildlife of all sorts they've got wombats and echidnas we actually saw an echidna on the side of the road yesterday um, but also some snakes that are venomous like to bask in the sunshine keeping your eyes peeled for those um, but yeah hopefully when we go back um, we're going to also do a stop off at a wombat walk
So here we are at the far end of the lake. We've got the mountain behind us there. And if you look around there, I think we're gonna start heading away from the mountain again now. <sighs> Stunning. Wow, look at that view down into the lake. We're just coming up to the hut now. It says we're coming to the end of the circuit. Um, that's been amazing. Basically, when you're looking for wombats, look for furry rocks <laughs> that then start moving. And um, that's pretty much what we've just seen. Today, I'm in Tasmania and I'm driving from um, Launceston down to Fresnay National Park and here is one not to miss not far from Scottsdale Bridestow Lavender Farm particularly if you're an Instagrammer of Binalong Bay. Um, it's the southernmost tip of the Bay of Fires. Um, I've been driving for 40 kilometers on unpaved roads, which has been quite a trial, but it's been well worth it to reach this gorgeous spot. Look at this. One of the main things this area is famous for are these red lichens that are on the rocks. That's why it's called Bay of Fires. And like I said, Binalong Bay is one of the most, or the most southern place that you can see them. And if you like the redness at Binalong Bay, then literally just around the corner is Skeleton Bay. I'm in Fresnay National Park, I think that's how you pronounce it, in Tasmania. And we're about to do one of the most popular probably hikes in Tasmania, which is go up to the Wine Glass Bay Lookout. It's supposed to be absolutely stunning. It's about an hour or an hour and a half. It says three kilometers, but the big thing is it's upstairs. So, um, not upstairs, but upstairs. Um, I think it said there's about 400 steps. So they call it moderate to difficult. Um, it's first thing in the morning, so we thought we'd tackle it before it gets really hot. It says 20 minutes left. It says we've done 20 minutes, but I think this is where the stairs start. <laughs> If 
you would like to do some of these things in Tasmania or get some of these experiences yourself then click below um, check out all the links to my blog posts I'm lucky today I'm hiking with my sister but I do do a lot of hiking alone and I've got lots of top tips on how to hike on your own um, and if you're looking for maybe putting this onto your bucket list or any other travel experiences for that matter then there's also a link there where you can get my 201 inspirational ideas for things to put on your travel bucket list Not far now. that Al? Yeah good, not quite as challenging as we thought it would I be. Know, it wasn't but um yeah. I, th I think in the heat of the day it would have been hard so we're doing early morning. Yeah wise Beautiful. top tip kids. Yes and well worth the view at the end. Definitely worth it. Before we leave the national park we've just popped down from the visitor center to the hazards viewing platform um, on a lovely beach and look at that Hobart, not quite sunny Hobart in Tasmania. Just arrived this morning and we're about to get the ferry over to Mona, which is the Museum of Old and New Art. And it is the one place that when we've said we're coming to Tasmania, everyone says you have to go to Mona. So today's the day. You can get a ferry over there for about $22 or I think it's 65 if you go VIP with a glass of bubbles or something. We just do the standard one. We're all booked in online. Um, and yeah, looking forward to maybe a little drizzly trip on the ferry. Mona, uh, really good ferry ride, costs about $22 on the ferry, I think you can get a bus for the same amount of money, it takes half an hour, really nice along the Derwent River, um, and $38 for the entrance fee. There's an app that you can download when you're on the ferry called The O, um, gives you all the information about the museum. Um, so off inside, I'm not going to take you with me because I think it's important that you see this kind of stuff for yourself. Um, but yeah, here we are at Mona in Hobart. So I've just come out of Mona. I'm a little confused. I think it was all too cool for me. <laughs> um, lots of everything old and new and mixed up and all sorts of stuff it's dark it's tunnels it's basically apparently cost 75 million dollars to build it's three floors down underground so architecturally it's fascinating the art is amazing there's Damien Hirst there's Picasso there's um yeah literally all sorts <laughs> and I think you probably you have to come and see it for yourself and you have to make your own opinion on it. Um, I was a little confused, um, but yeah, it's a beautiful location. There's loads of restaurants and stuff and there's still art and all sorts of things out here as well. Mm -hmm. 